Um, here with Dave Perry, editor of the Aurora Sentinel newspaper. Let's start first by talking about the photo selection that you guys had for the David Puckett story. When you first saw the photo that you used, what did you think? It, it makes you draw your breath. Any time that you see anybody that's in a bad way or you know a crisis situation or something, um, it's provocative and it's disturbing. Um, when there's a child involved, it's just the worst possible situation. And and the first thing you want to do is your your heart goes out to to the people who were there at the time, the family members involved. At the same time, you know when you do this for so long, you look at these images and what you're trying to do is convey a story. And you know when you look at an image that's the story, that this is telling what's really going on, that it's a, a cogent piece that helps you understand precisely how people feel and what the repercussions are after what was a, a, a huge haunt for this little boy for a long time, a lot of drama and um, a lot of angst. And so when you look at this, that captivated that moment. And we realized that's what we wanted to do, is our job as journalists is to help people understand what goes on in their world in the best possible way. And we do that, you know, through stories, through images, but the image themselves conveys that moment of, of somebody being pulled from the ice that's been looked for for a long time. And that type of tragedy is something that people need to understand, that, that things don't always end up the way we want them to, and, and tragedy um, doesn't get a nice icing on it when you're, when you're at the scene. Do you agree with me that the most striking photographs anytime something terrible happens, that those photos are always tough to look at? Oklahoma City, 9-11. Like, the photos that we remember are not easy photos to look at. They never are. They depict something that's not easy at all. That's the worst part of life. And, and so the very nature of what they're, the, the subject matter of the photos is hard enough. But when you graphically show that moment of of when someone's carrying a dead child, like in the Oklahoma City bombing, or um, more recently, uh, the Syrian boy whose body washed up on shore. I mean, those provocative type of photos are, are the toughest calls there are because I don't want to look at them. I look away, you know, as an editor, just when I see these things, it, it, it's immediately a type of revulsion. At the same time, you know, I, I just go back to, we're trying to convey what's really happening and and a lot of times we're so overwhelmed with with bad news and tragic news that you don't understand that this is this is real and this could happen anywhere there's there's a thousand ponds like that in a thousand parks across this country and and it happened right here at home and it can happen to any of our children and and it's something that those type of provocative photos help people understand that, that this is very real and and the tragedy um, as painful as it is, is something that we need to understand in, in the world around us. Did you consider whether David's mother would see the photo and how she might react? Did that play at all into your decision? That's the first thing we think of, and any human does, any parent does, is, is what would the parents think having to see this? And that days from now, you know, there may be a funeral for this little boy, and we may or may not be there, but we've covered these type of events before in funerals, and usually the, one of the classic shots that come out of, a, out of a, a child's funeral is the casket, the small casket. And we've all seen these, and it, it has a very similar effect, but we don't get the complaints from that. It's like, it, in some ways, they're very similar. Is like, you know that there's the body of a small child inside that container, no different than it is in a body bag. But the context of what's happening is the story isn't about the loss of a child days later. The story here is about the worst possible result of an investigation. And people who were just hours before out searching for this little boy, the immediacy of what we can do with these type of photos helps people understand that tragedy happens in this way and and we don't want to inflict that pain and we think about that you know what would that parent feel but we don't produce news just for one single person that this was a very public event the search was a very public event and the ending was a very public event too if journalists shied away from doing things that would prompt an angry reaction from some of the community 
Uh, we would never ask a probing question of a politician. We would never investigate a business. We would never r write a funny line in a story because all those things automatically draw derision. But what role did the expected public feedback to your decision play in your decision-making process? You know, um, digital news and social media has changed this game. That Previously, what we would do is agonize over a decision whether or not to run a, a photo in print. And then the the... The feedback from that would come days later usually, um, usually not even the morning that, that you're on the stands. But now the immediacy is so quick, no sooner did we get that photo up and we got pushed back just immediately on Twitter and, and also on the, online. What was the most coaching criticism you heard? Um, the, the most coaching? Yeah, well, no, the most cogent, the, oh, the, co most, okay, the, most, the most rational or the most thoughtful criticism that you heard. Um, that we don't realize um, the pain we inflict on the family members. And, and, and that's, I think, a misunderstanding, that, that we do understand that, that we make that decision not willingly um, and not easily, but we make that decision on purpose, that we know that, that you know, just like you pointed out, if, if we were trying to avoid controversy and hurting people's feelings or causing pain and grief, you know, we would be a public relations agency and, and there would be no news anymore. And part of what we do is explain to a world that, that deals with pain is, is this is what it's really like and, and not take a, a view one side or the other to shield somebody from that, but just be honest to the story and honest to the moment uh, about this is what it's like, that anyone could have been near that park and watched the same thing. And, and that's the, the, the the way we go toward these stories is we're just the eyes and the ears of the public and we want to show you here, here's what's happening in your world even when your world falls apart. We'll often hear from people in the community, I'm sure you hear as well, that well gore sells or tragedy sells or graphic pictures sell. I've never heard that uttered once in any of the five newsrooms that I've worked in. You hear that from people? It's something we're cognizant of more than we don't want to be judged that way. That you know, we we don't want to be gratuitous in what we do, and and the temptation is there, especially, you know, the Denver market is one of the most competitive markets, media markets in the country, and and so we're all fighting for viewers and readers, and and so the temptation and the realization of it, or the the awareness of it, is there. But everybody I know in this business, in television and uh, in print journalism. Um, would never make a news decision based on something like that. That you know, we would write a headline that's inviting or provocative um, for the sense of bringing someone into a story, but to purposely, um, you know, pump gore as news is something real journalists just don't do. Let me ask you about another headline in your community uh, about the uh, the mall brawl. Uh, we like it on TV because it rhymes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's the second best thing to alliteration. Um, What's your take on what happened at the Town Center Mall and how it's been widely covered outside of Aurora but throughout the Denver area? You know, um, the, the Town Center Aurora Mall is um, a pretty typical piece of Aurora itself. And, you know, the city uh, for years and years has gotten a bad rap. And one of the reasons why is a lot of people don't realize how large Aurora is. It's, it's almost 350,000 people now. And that's larger than just about every other city in a lot combined in Colorado. With that many people in a place that is so diverse and so culturally diverse, you, you got to expect that there's going to be problems sometimes or things that happen in an urban area that you don't expect in a suburb. So the mall is kind of a reflection of that, is that it's a large mall in a large city and there's a very diverse population that goes there. It's not um, the type of population that lives up toward Boulder or something like that that um, you know doesn't have problems with just teenagers staying out past 10 o'clock, and they might disagree that they actually have those problems too. Uh, but for the most part, you know, the, the mall itself gets, um, when news happens there, people focus on that because they're surprised that something would happen like that in, in a suburb. And the point of that is that it's really not a suburb, that you know, Aurora is now an exurb in a city in its own right and, and has a whole lot going on there. But the, the mall itself has, you know, 
rightfully been criticized for some things that they've done. There was a time when they were rebuilding the mall and an employee there was taped um, by a television station publicly saying that they were um, trying to change the mall and its attitude and in hope, doing that hoping to chase away um, urban black males from going there to make it uninviting for them because they had thought that that was a problem. And, and so the mall took a lot of heat for that, rightfully so. But they worked really hard to come back from that and we saw that. And, and they've had other problems, sometimes either around racism or just about crime that happens there that could have happened anywhere. And each time that we look closely at what goes on in the mall, they don't avoid it and they address it. They have essentially a mini police station in there. Any teenager that goes in knows that there's uh, uniformed and armed police in there. So for the most part, in, in looking at the, the criminal history there, it looks an awful lot like every other mall in the metro area. I think just because of the history and because it's in Aurora that a lot of times uh, we and other media focus more on that and, and maybe make the story seem more provocative than it really is. Um, but on the other hand, the police went in and shut down a mall on the day after Christmas and there was a brawl inside the mall. There was clearly one outside the mall. There was no question about that it happened, and there are questions about whether or not police handled themselves right. There's questions about how the mall handled, you know, large quantities of teenagers uh, the day after uh, a holiday. So I think there's, they deserve uh, hard questions to be asked, and we're looking forward to them being forthcoming about answers, probably in the very near future. Mm -hmm. And we ran into the strange instance of a mall truther, your city councilwoman, Marsha Persons, who told us that there was no fight at the mall, there was no incident at the mall, despite the videotaped evidence. I think we can agree, something happened there, it's worth talking about. Harder question now, when you see the coverage outside your paper, in other media outlets, of what happened at the mall, do you see a racial tinge to it? No. You don't? There are, are you know, Aurora and the, the shoppers at this mall are, are racially diverse. So anything that happens, you know, is going to show um, a, a wide variety of people from different races and backgrounds. That's the only thing is that the story happened to involve those people. But I didn't see anything so far, and we've looked very closely, that there's any kind of racially motivated coverage or there's any racially motivated problem between the police or someone in the mall. You know, that's up to the police and, and individual agencies to determine whether or not police acted right or mall officials, you know, have a, a, a problem that they are or not aware of. But just on the, the, the look of what it is, you know, we watched the television coverage, we watched your own coverage um, that from other Denver newspapers. Uh, we haven't seen anything that, that shows that people are trying to make this into a racial issue. It's not, or hide from the fact that there were, um, that there were you know, different uh, races involved uh, in, in, this, in this brawl. Dave Perry from the Aurora Sentinel, thanks for your time. Thanks. Appreciate it very much, thank you. Sure Appreciate thing. you swinging down.